gamer. Super Mega Baseball 3 doesn't try for a second to be something it's not. The game is a true arcade baseball title that's accessible for anyone interested. But don't let the looks and the name fool you, this game can be as deep as you'd like. The follow-up to the critically acclaimed Super Mega Baseball 2, this year's installment feels extremely similar to its predecessor, while still doing plenty to be different. From new modes to gameplay enhancements, Metal Ed Software has pulled out all the stops to take its baseball franchise to the next level. But does it do enough to warrant the jump for everyone, or should you stick with what you have? For the most part, gameplay remains similar to that of Super Mega Baseball 2. That said, there are things that make the game feel much more authentic than before. For starters, pitching has a number of new additions. Super Mega Baseball 3 introduces wild pitches, pitch outs, pass balls, and even the ability to pick off base runners. Throwing power pitches has become more difficult with precise timing being more key than either of the first two games. If you think throwing power pitches every single time will lead to success at the higher ego levels, you're going to be greatly disappointed. Pass balls are determined by a variety of factors, including your pitcher's stamina, skill level, and your catcher's skill behind the plate. For pickoffs, they won't always make it to your destination if your pitcher's tense or isn't that good at throwing. Pitchouts work when you think a base runner is going to steal, and you want to make sure you have a chance to throw them out. Just be prepared for a possible wild throw. At the plate, it feels a lot like the last game, just more responsive. There was rarely a delay, even when testing online play, in my swing response time. One small thing I really enjoyed was the simple sounds of the bat making contact with the ball. Depending on where you hit the ball with your bat, you could get a completely different sound which was just so satisfying to hear. You also sense a real nice difference between contact and power hitters this time around, though if you're lucky you may still find yourself making great contact with a low skilled pitcher at the plate. Also more responsive are the fielding controls. Throwing to your chosen base or even cutoff man is quick and easy. What I would like to see slightly improved, however, is the transition when the cutoff man gets the ball. It takes a bit too long, even for the higher rated players, to make the transition throw to the selected base. When you go to steal bases, it now happens automatically when hitting the appropriate button. If you are used to watching your players run only at the right moment, it may take a game or two to bake the new stealing mechanics into your mind. In the long run though, it adds more timing requirements and realism when trying to steal at the cost of short-term frustration. Now while the gameplay is the great Super Mega Baseball gameplay that you've come to know and love, that doesn't mean it's perfect. My main problems with the gameplay come in two areas. The first involves the lack of any sort of fly ball indicator. Sometimes it can be a real nightmare to track down a fly ball with the outfielders. The other problem I have is that those same fielders will feel like they're floating above the ground especially when moving side to side. Now it rarely ever happens with infielders, but outfielders have this annoyance quite often. These are two things that I'd like to see fixed in post-launch updates, but that doesn't mean they take away from the overall enjoyment that the game presents as is right now. Super Mega Baseball 3 features a number of returning modes like Exhibition, Season, Elimination, and Pennant Race. Pennant Race remains a favorite mode of mine due to not only its ease to join as you can just queue up for a contest while doing anything else in the game, but its quick manner as well. One race per day and then you get to start anew to race up the leaderboards every day. The big new addition to the game this time around is Franchise Mode. A unique take on the traditional mode, Super Mega Baseball 3 gives fans a deep mode to come back to while adding that expected Super Mega Baseball flair. The premise of the mode is simple. Take a team of your choice, pre-made or custom, into the mode with the sole goal of building a perennial championship contender. Inside the mode you have plenty of what you'd expect as far as roster management and player development, however Super Mega Baseball 3 does things quite differently than other franchise mode entries. First, let's talk about player development. Instead of just taking the XP and improving your players, development is done via funds available to you as determined by your budget. Throughout the season, various update roles become available all having different costs. These updates have a set amount of gains before they can expire, but that doesn't guarantee they all will at that time. 
That's the beauty of the feature. Also, not every boost is the same. With each purchase development, the game will roll the boost giving your players a chance to see anywhere from a significant improvement to just a minor tweak to your stats. On top of that, your players will have a chance to earn both positive and negative player traits from the purchases. As far as those funds to make the purchases, those are determined by what's left over after you fill out your roster. At the start of each season, whatever amount you haven't spent on players the year prior carries over as a surplus for player development funds. That simple mechanic adds strategy towards whether you go all out on roster additions or save some cash to improve the players you already have. Moving on to building your roster, Super Mega Baseball 3 allows you to sign and release players throughout the season, but the most turnover will happen during the offseason. All contracts are essentially one-year deals where players have the option to resign or retire from your squad. When this happens, it's up to you to take the funds you have to replenish your roster and add new talent. During this time period, you'll have up to 32 rounds or weeks of opportunity to sign players. In week one, all available players will demand their highest salaries. It's up to you to decide whether or not to give them what they want, or wait a little bit to see if they remain available at a cheaper price. When you get that player to come down to a price you're comfortable in paying, it can feel just as rewarding as a win on the field. Sometimes though, you'll wait just a little bit too long and end up losing that player you wanted. It's all part of that risk reward that's there when trying to assemble a team. Once you're happy with your roster, spent all your money, or you've gone through all 32 rounds, you can then advance to the next season to try and achieve championship glory. Now it would have been nice to have a bit more to do in the offseason, but for a first step in a brand new franchise mode, what's there is fun for what it is. Now if there's one aspect of the game that I feel was neglected a bit, it's presentation. Much of it remains exactly the same from the last installment, which is kind of a bummer. From the slow motion after contact to the post home run animations, it just feels a little bit too much of the same. That said, there are some nice improvements. First, when in a playoff game in your franchise, the atmosphere is quite different than regular season games, as fans are much louder throughout. Another boost comes in the form of the game's PA announcer. Instead of saying the player's number or position, a player's name is properly announced. From Bobby Bash to Ray's Rufo, it's a great touch to hear some of the outlandish names that make up the Super Mega Baseball rosters. From a stadium standpoint, there are now 14 unique ballparks to choose from, up from 8 in the last game. Each stadium looks completely different from the other, and all have a fun atmosphere to them. From the truck going up and down the rock wall at Red Rock Park, to the Yankee Stadium-inspired Apple Field, you can spend so much time getting lost in the environment. Sadly though, there remains no replay feature within the game, which is disappointing, leaving you limited in what you can relive and enjoy. Super Mega Baseball 3 is exactly what you'd expect from the series. An experience that plays as close to simulation baseball as possible, while still clearly being an over-the-top arcade game. The addition of franchise mode adds hours of replay value to the game, on top of the fun pennant race mode. On the field, despite the feeling that your fielders are floating at times, it's a much more finely tuned baseball game. With an accurate physics engine and more responsive controls than either of the prior two games, Super Mega Baseball 3 is sure to be in the running for multiple awards throughout the year, and could very well become once again the best baseball game on the market. For more on Super Mega Baseball 3 and sports gaming content daily, leave a like on this video, subscribe to Sports Gamers Online, and hit that bell to turn on your notifications so you never miss a thing. And if you want to take your support for Sports Gamers Online to the next level, sign up for SGO Insider today for exclusive news, tips, and insider information that you won't find anywhere else.